Hi, this is Lisa Kelly, Notre Dame author and class of 1993, and you are watching the Two Irish Brothers Show. Cheers and go Irish. Going deep for Smith, Irv Smith. What a run by Smith. Look at that, touchdown, oh my. How's it going everyone? I am Sean Moriarty. I'm Benjamin Walters. And of course, this is the Two Irish Brothers Show. You guys know the drill. Hit that subscribe tab in the bottom right-hand corner. Like or dislike the video for uh, algorithm purposes. And just come give us some love, people. So, with that said, I know that this past Saturday is in the, the rearview mirror, Ben. But mm -hmm. I, got a, I got a couple things to say. What a pathetic display on Saturday. Yeah. Now... I don't want to turn outplayed. Yep, exactly. Outcoached, outplayed. Blame and thrown everywhere, not in just one spot. <clears throat> no. Overall team loss. Coaches lost it. Players lost it. Um, everybody beat Notre Dame this week on that team. Yeah. Um, but uh listen, I'm not trying to become the people that I hate, you know, the quote unquote realists, but I've always told people, Ben, you and I we're always going to stick with our team, but we tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm still trying to figure out what the hell was going on against Louisville. Cause I, what were we trying to do? I mean, you think you would think that Duke would have taught us a lesson. Now, granted in that Duke game, we were without three of our top receivers. I get that, but still we get guys back and we're still doing the same crap. Mm -hmm. I mean, just for example, third and third and three or third and four, or whatever, run the draw with estimate right up the gut. Not only could, and it was a loaded box too, a loaded box. Louisville saw it coming. Hell, the guy in the stand selling hot dogs could see it. So could see it coming. So mm -hmm. what the hell was going on? Was there point shaving going on? Did I said this in the the post game on the Voice of College Football? Quote, Mr. Potato Head from Toy Story. Did everybody wake up and take stupid pills on Saturday morning? No. I mean, I please help, help <laughs> you out here, Ben. What was that crap? I don't know. <clears throat> but they got to get it cleaned up because the focus is shifting. The focus is shifting to a team that we see every year and a yeah. team that we know what they're about, who they are coming into – every matchup that we have against them, and that is the Southern Cal Trojans. This year, we know what they're about, okay? We know they're undefeated. We know that last year they absolutely embarrassed us in the Coliseum. And we know that this year it is our turn to give them a little bit of payback. But to do that, we have to clean everything up. We have to clean everything up. There has to be crisp play calling. There has to be perfect execution of plays. And, you know, this is a rivalry game. Things are different in rivalry games. I'm sorry. Things are different. Records don't mean jack in rivalry games. Okay? They don't. I don't care if you're 0-10 coming into a rivalry game or 10-0. It's a different kind of emotion. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, we hate these guys and these guys hate us. And there's a reason that this is the longest running rivalry. I mean, yes, we had a year off with COVID, but there is a reason that us and them who don't belong to the same conference, who have never belonged to the same conference, play each other every year. There's a reason. And this game is the big one. We can lose to Ohio State. We can lose to Michigan. We can lose to Alabama. We can lose to Georgia. Whoever. We can lose to all of them. We can lose to Louisville like we did last week. Okay? This is the game you don't lose. This is, this is the game you do not lose on your schedule. This and Navy. You don't lose to those two teams on the schedule. Yeah. And we've got two losses. Let's be honest. Playoffs are most likely, if not, out the window they're most likely about to be out the window, okay? 
they I, I i agree with that i mean you know there's an, indep- an independent team is not going to make the playoffs with two not losses. with not with the lost louisville a lot a close loss to ohio state you know with one loss on the schedule you know yeah louisville was ranked you know but you can't lose like you did to louisville and expect to make the playoffs sorry no um the be- the best thing we can hope for right now is where we were at this point in the season uh, last year. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. playoffs are done. Playoffs are gone. Now, do you want to try to win 10 games and make an NY6 bowl, hopefully? Yeah. Yeah. Or do we just want to lay down? Yeah, well, and beat good teams That's along right. the way. Because we have good teams still on the schedule. Southern Cal, Clemson, Pittsburgh's no slouch. No. You know, so we have some good teams left on this schedule. And we can play spoiler. This is our chance to play spoiler with Southern Cal. Something that they've done in the past to us. They're looking to make their first college football playoff. How awesome would it be for Notre Dame to beat the ever-living crap out of Southern Cal, like the way we did against Clemson last year, and pretty much dash their hopes of a playoff. Oh, I'd love it. I love it. And I I truly as a fan, which I'll never I'll never stop supporting this team. I'll always love the Irish. I'm you know fighting Irish till the day I die. But I'm have I'm having a hard time being optimistic. You know, because we've we've seen what USC's been like on the field. High powered offense, crap defense that you know we should be expected to pick apart. With with the the way the play calling's been the, the past few weeks, I mean, I'm sorry, Jared Parker, you're starting to look like Tommy Reese, and is that really yeah. what you want your legacy to be? Is that well, what it's not even just you him. want to go down? No, it's not it, just him. It, it's Al Golden too. I mean, you know, you go yeah. back, you watch the Louisville game, you watch some of the coverages, you watch some of the execution, and you watch some of the players. What are we doing? So yeah, well, the, no, the I agree. Part I totally is the agree. Cr- this, this Southern Cal team has one of the best offenses in the country, okay? And we're going up against what most consider the number one pick of the draft in Caleb Williams. And you can have any kind of opinion you want of Caleb Williams and his personality and his way he conducts himself off the field, but he is, without a doubt, one of the best college football players currently in college football. Facts. I know that can and be argued. You know, there's a reason that he won the Heisman last year. There's a reason that he continues to do what he does. We cannot take Southern Cal lightly, and we cannot play the way we've been playing these last few weeks if we expect to beat Southern Cal. That's fact. I'm sorry. You know, like, if we play the way we played against Louisville, and heck, if we play the way we played against Duke, we're screwed. We're screwed against Southern Cal. We're screwed. I mean, Southern Cal will absolutely demolish us. Do I want that to happen? No. No, I don't. I'm not going to be a realist and say we have no shot against Southern Cal. We, you know, aren't going to win this game. No. If we play Notre Dame football and if we play the way that we played against Ohio State, we have a shot at beating Southern Cal and we should beat them. But yeah, I mean, in the games that's- that we have played – we have beaten ourselves more than the teams have beaten us. Well, yeah, I mean, just to, just to start, I mean, I mentioned Jared Parker already, but let's break down some of the other positions. What the hell happened with our offensive line? Joe yeah. Alt, Blake Fisher, they were getting pushed around, and these are supposed to be some top draft picks here. Right. I mean, they, they couldn't protect Hartman. Now, Hartman was making mistakes, yes, but when you, the pressure's on and your offensive line isn't helping you, what do you expect? Yeah. What do you expect? And then drop passes from guys like uh, Chris Tyree, who had it right in his right in his hands. You got to come down with those catches. Yep. And you know the defense, which I got to say in Louisville, the defense I got to say actually kept us in it for quite a while. So I'm yep. not surprised they kind of got gassed at the end. But yes, the missed tackles came back, the bad coverages, the bad play calling by uh, Al Golden. Um. You know how, how far do we want to go with this, Ben? We could we could put we could. There's blame all over the whole yeah. team for this this past yeah. week's loss. And but I'm yeah, and unfortunately, or fortunately, you know that game's in the Louisville game's in the past, 
And the best thing that Notre Dame has going for it is we're back home. We're back home. Yeah. It's a night game. <clears throat> it's in our stadium. Southern Cal has to travel here. We have an opportunity, an opportunity to gain some respect back and to knock Southern Cal potentially out of the playoff picture. So now it's time to step up. It is time to go, okay, Caleb Williams, let's break it down, has thrown for almost 2,000 yards. He's right below 2,000 yards. 1,822 with 22 touchdowns. That's pretty insane numbers, okay? We know who he is. We know who Brendan Rice is and Taj Washington. Both of them have 400 yards receiving. I mean, that's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. And, 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 um, isn't one of them a freshman, I do believe? So, yeah. We have work cut out for us against against this Trojan this Trojan team. Their weakness, and we mentioned it before, their weakness is their defense. Okay, you don't on the, you go down their schedule. <clears throat> ASU was in the game against them. Colorado was in the game against them. Arizona was in the game against them. And you know this is a defense that is that is weak. It is not the same defense that they had last year. Last year, Southern Cal had a pretty good defense. This year. They've taken a step back. But if Hartman can't have time to throw, what's the point? So, well, and also <clears throat> another thing, too, is uh, Jared Parker has to trust his receivers, too. Yes. And, sit- and there has to be situational play calling. I know that we're not coaches. I get that. We're average Joes yeah. in a basement. I'm in a basement. Um, and, but, Situationally, if you see that they're going to load the box, okay, anybody with half a brain, and if you're playing Madden or something and you go, huh, you know, my opponent looks like they're blitzing. Maybe I should do a short, quick slant. Or, hmm, my opponent looks like that they're loading the box up. Maybe I should audible out of this run play that I've picked. Maybe we should try that. Exactly. Okay. Like, sorry, not sorry about that. We can't do that against Southern Cal. Okay, these guys hate us. Okay, like there's th- nothing would give Southern Cal more pleasure than absolutely embarrassing us in our own stadium. Okay, they're not looking at us like we're some team that just lost Louisville. Okay, they're looking at us like, okay, we're gonna lick our chops, we're gonna kill these guys, and we want to embarrass them. Yeah, I mean, so. Will the real Notre Dame please show up and stand up in this game? Yeah, unless – unless you, uh, that's what I'd say to the players and the coaches right now. Do you want the past couple of weeks – well, actually, let's throw Ohio State in there too because there were some there were some stupid play calls in that, yeah. in that as well and some mistakes. Do you want these last three weeks to be what Notre Dame football is? Is that what you want Notre Dame's legacy to be? Because mm-hmm. as a fan, I sure as hell don't. And I would mm-hmm. hope that all of you – as the players and the coaches don't want that to be the case either. Because right now, everybody's laughing at us. And yes, by the way, I can say us. Because we had some uh, a couple, uh, one guy at least uh, saying that I can't say us because I'm not on the team. Well, you know what? I'm a part of this fan base. I give a damn about this team. I want this team to succeed. So yeah, I can say us all day freaking long. But is that what you want the legacy to be? Is that what you want the Notre Dame standard to be is the last three weeks? Because I sure as hell don't. So as my high school coach would say when we when we played stupid, pull your head out of your ass and play the kind of football that we know that you guys can play. And same yeah. for the coaches. I get it. Marcus Freeman is a young coach. He's mm-hmm. getting he's getting his stuff, you know, he's he's learning. And I and look, he's only been the head coach of Notre Dame for a year and a half. So, you know what? I'm I'm still giving him a break. But there comes a time where you have to stop saying, oh, we didn't execute. Well, I guess he hasn't really been saying that lately. But you know what, Marcus? Notre Dame is still beating Notre Dame. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for how we played the last three weeks. There's no excuse for the no. ridiculous calls that some of your assistants are making. It's ridiculous. Clean it up. 
A lot of it is common sense that you don't need to be an expert coach at. <clears throat> and like you said, Ben, I'm going to make it clear as well. I'm not qualified to be a coach. But like I said, what the example that I gave about Audrey Gestime and them running a, mm -hmm. a, a draw up the middle mm -hmm. on third and three when the box mm -hmm. is stacked and mm -hmm. everybody, including the vendors mm -hmm. in the concessions, can see it, you don't do it. Mm -hmm. That's just common sense stuff right there. Football 101. <clears throat> so do something different. You see the mistakes. Now start fixing it. And it's, it's, you know, I mean, the thing is, yeah, we suffer as fans because, you know, we get abused by not only Notre Dame haters, but the ones within our own fan base who say some of the dumbest crap I've ever heard in my life. Hence the message board that, uh, or well, the Facebook group that you and I both manage or help mm -hmm. manage. I mean, you've seen a lot, the, all, a lot of the stupid crap on there, giving mm -hmm. up on this team, wanting Freeman fired, this, that, whatever. I yeah. can't blame him for being angry, but. Aside from us suffering with all that crap, <clears throat> you guys on that field and the sidelines should be feeling it the most, which I'm not saying they aren't, but it's almost like there's no care there sometimes. There's no passion. There's no fire. Yeah, Change it. Bring that fire up out of your bellies and let it explode on the football field. And I'm sorry for my rant. I, I, I digress, but I mean, damn. No, this, it's, Notre Dame is better than this. Yeah. And I'm sick and tired of seeing the same old crap that lose, we've seen in years past. When you lose to a team like Ohio State, okay, it, when you got a top five team, okay, the odds are stacked against both teams. You know, you're playing a good team. When you lose to Louisville, that's different. I don't expect to have, to win every top 10 and top five matchup. I don't expect that. I do expect to win everything outside the top 10 as a Notre Dame fan. If we're playing a team that is outside the top 10, we should beat them every time. Yeah, but we, we, and, and that, I agree. And, but we, and, yeah, we, and we, not, we only, not only did we lose the game, not only did we lose to Louisville, there went the streak of the ACC consecutive wins. Well, not just that, but we got it. We got straight I mean, up embarrassed. So it's, it, it, it's unfathomable, but the focus has to shift. The focus you can't be licking your yeah. wounds. You can't be, woe is me, you know, in this in this matchup. Okay. This is Southern Cal. This is the next opponent. And this is the opponent that out of everybody on your schedule, except maybe Michigan, depending on the year, out of everybody on your schedule, they hate you the most. They want you to fail the most. The most. Okay. And we got to put up or shut up. All I'm going to say is this. <laughs> I'm basically echoing that sentiment, Ben, but I'm going to say it a little differently. Coach Freeman, his staff, and all the players on the field, <clears throat> if you guys want it bad enough this Saturday, you step up and show it. No, no pussyfooting around. You step up and show how bad you want to win these top games. Stop playing down to your opponent. In this case, you play up to your opponent and you get over the top. I'm sick of the same old crap. Let it fly. You let it fly and go out there and kick some ass. You know, as a fan, I'm tired of watching this crap that we've seen the last three weeks. Go out there and play Notre Dame football. And the Notre Dame football is smashing people in the mouth not this this bullshit that we've been seeing the last three weeks of mistakes, no tackling, stupid play calls on both sides of the ball, mental mistakes. Yes, I'm talking about Maris Leofau with that stupid penalty, but he's not the only one. He just that just happened to stand out. But smash him in the mouth. That's what Notre Dame football is. So start playing like it. And I'm sorry if I'm destroying your ears, Ben, or anybody who's watching, but goddamn. No, you're not destroying my ears. Um, so, anybody who might be listening, we, we on know we know what Southern Cal's about. We know we know it. Okay, we we know we know Lincoln Riley. We know his history. We know his success. We know what we have. So let's let's shift gears here. Okay, yeah. let's shift gears. And it's score prediction time. We've gone on long enough. We know who they are. We know what we have to do. We know what needs to change as fans. 
We want to win this game. Score prediction time. I do believe I went first last week. No, you I did. Okay. I say Notre Dame 35, Southern Cal 28. Let's beat the hell out of some Trojans. Like I said earlier, Ben, I'm I'm keeping I'm keeping my optimism. And I'm never going to predict predict us to lose a game. You know that. And I know some people are expecting me to do that even after getting pissed off there, but I'm still not going to do that. I'm a fan of this team, and I expect us to win every time we step out on the field. Of course, whatever happens, happens. But I got I can't say that necessarily that we're going to pick apart this defense. If, if things continue the way that they have been the last three weeks, then it's going to be a long day on the field. So I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong about that. I like to think that we have the offense that can shred this uh, this crap uh, USC defense apart. But if we start making them look like the 85 Bears, then, yeah, we're going to have problems. So if we're able to finally clean things up, then I'm going to say Notre Dame 38, USC 21. I like it. But, it's, it, but, like it. but, it, but if we're not able to clean it up, then we're probably going to get the crap kicked out of us if we don't. So this is the time where we have to pull our heads out of our ass and play Notre Dame football. But 38, 38 to 21, that's my score prediction. Because I like to think that our defense, too, is capable of shutting down this offense, this USC offense. Because they showed flashes of it last year in the Coliseum. Because there were some moments where they did step up and they, they made some plays. But you have to keep Caleb Williams contained. You have to. So, yeah, yeah I, we got to step it up. We got to step it up, stop pussyfooting around, and let it all hang out. So that's that's what I, I have to say about that. I dig it. So, yeah, um, with that said, very uh, obviously a very passionate preview here, but I had to get that shit out. Because I'm tired of seeing Notre Dame play like this. They have the talent to go all the way. Mm-hmm. And, but, but it's just like, it seems like this has happened too much in recent history where we take a big step forward, but then we just seem to take a, like, a bunch of steps back. Mm-hmm. And. Yep, I agree. I just, I can, I can't understand that. I agree. It's either it's either it's either we play down to our opponent or we don't play high enough, and that has to change. You yep. think so, you think somebody on that sideline or on that field would have that figured out by now? Because yeah, I mean, like I said, us fans, if we were so good at it, we'd be doing the job. Yep. But it, it, it's kind of obvious that it, that everybody can see it. You don't need to be a coaching expert to see it. So yep. I hope to God this team wakes up. And gets it done. Do what you're supposed to do. We're expected to, you know, before, even before, you know, these last three weeks, coming into this one, you see USC's defense. We're expected to to shred that defense apart. Go out and actually do it. Yep. So that's all I have to say, man. That's all I've got. I got nothing else. All right. Well, with that said, everyone, I am Indy Sean 45. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I'm I'm Sean Morarity. I want you guys to know it's personal. <laughs> I'm Benjamin Walters. And as we always say, good night, God bless, and go Irish. Go Irish. Beat the Trojans. <laughs>